on the fourth and final stage of the Rubik's Cube. Stage one was permuting the eight corner pieces. Stage two was orienting the corner pieces so that the white stickers were on top and the yellow stickers were on the bottom. Stage three, which was the most complicated, was permuting the 12 edges so they're in their proper place. And stage four is to orient the edge pieces so that the proper sticker is with the, with the, with on the proper face. So like for instance, uh, this white green needs to be flipped and this one that's sort of orange and white needs to be flipped. And you can actually see on this part down here, the numbers that are upside down are the ones that need to be flipped. Um, edges can be flipped in pairs. So like if I come over here and I click on the eight and the four, it's going to do this cryptic series of moves. It's got 20 moves actually. And it's going to orient those two edges properly while leaving the rest of the cube exactly as it was. And if I click it again, I can see the 12 and the 16 need to be oriented, flipped. And when I do this, you'll see again a sort of cryptic series of about 20 moves that will orient those last two edges and the cube will be fully solved at that point. The purpose of this video is to show you how, you know, what's going on in these patterns and to give you some challenges that sort of show you why those patterns work. It's all based on uh, puzzle number 12. In puzzle number 12, kind of like flipping to, uh, we also noticed this when we did the orienting of the corners, but puzzle number 12 is, uh, I, I want the five and one to flip and the eight and four to flip. So two things that need to be flipped, just like uh, when you're flipping the edges in a Rubik's cube. And one of the moves was this very complicated looking move. It, it, it does get the eight and four swapped, but it makes a whole mess out of the bottom two layers. Take a look. So the eight and four are fixed, but the bottom two layers, bottom two rows are all messed up. But if I undo that move, well, the four and eight go back to where they were, the bottom gets fixed. So let me do that again, but instead of undoing it now and getting back to where I was, I do this A move, which flips one and four and five and eight, while leaving every, everything else in the whole square the same. Now if I undo move B, what's going to happen is the bottom's going to get fixed, the bottom two rows. The one and five are going to get flipped, because uh, that's what happens when you undo B. When, when I do B, they get flipped first. So when I undo B now, the one and five get flipped, and then I undo A, and uh, the whole thing is fixed. So that's worth looking at for a while, because that's the secret. Not only, we've actually seen this one a couple of times, but it's definitely worth looking at. Now let's look at, I think it's puzzle 23. It is. No, it's not. It's puzzle 22. So puzzle 22, I want to flip this one edge piece and these gray squares, these gray cubes, doesn't matter what happens to those. We're just going to try to just flip this. And we, we, want the, we want the rest of the top to not get changed, but we don't uh, care whether anything on the bottom, any of these gray pieces, and we wouldn't even know if they got switched because they're all gray anyway. Now, this is worth pushing pause. It's worth picking up a real Rubik's Cube and just coming up. There, there's many ways to, to accomplish this. I, I have a way that I'm going to show you, but... Just think, even if it takes 10, 15 moves, can you flip that one edge? And no matter how you did it, it's, it's okay, although I'll give you a way that, that I like. So pause, do that. Okay, welcome back. I'll show you my way of, of doing this, that, that I like to do it. Um, this green and white needs to be sort of separated from these if it's going to get reunited in, in, in its uh, flips over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the green face clockwise. And then I'm going to do, 
I'm going to sort of get these two corner pieces away from that edge by doing the white face clockwise. And on the bottom, that yellow face, he has to actually go counterclockwise to, to basically both of these guys moved over here. And now a somewhat sneaky trick is to watch, watch what happens. I'm going to swing that guy around. So now we can see those pieces. Oops, I went too far. We can see them over there. Now, by bringing the white face over twice, doesn't matter whether I go counterclockwise or clockwise, but I'm going to go counterclockwise. See, now there, those are together, and I'll bring the yellow face over twice. And then, in this case, the red face clockwise. And I've, I've managed uh, to do it. Uh, let's write that down as a, as a official... Uh, pattern. Anyway, you might have had other ways of doing this also. Let me just undo this. So if my front face is green, it would be F U Z inverse L2 U2 D2, R. And if I were to undo this move, this, oh, and by the way, this not only flipped it, but it actually put it in this spot over here. That's fine. If I undo it, if I undo those, those moves, it would be R minus U2, D2, L2, U minus, D, F minus. And that would get that, that would uh, bring that guy back, flip him back. Here I have actual Rubik's Cube, and I want to flip that green and white piece edge without and without messing up the rest of the top but uh, not worrying about anything on the bottom two layers there's F a little sticker here to remove so so uh, I do this F move and now I get those edges sort of separated from the edge piece now I do an L2, I sort of swing them around, and then when I, there they are on the back, then when I do uh, U2 and D2, they get put together with the edge properly, and then R. Now, that fixed it, but yes, there's a lot of problems with the bottom two layers, but that's not our issue right now. The issue is, can we flip one edge, then we'll see how we can, uh, oh, and if we undo it, doing that sequence of moves backwards, you can see that it will put it back uh, with the edge flipped. Now let's apply this to the big puzzle of this video, which is, I think, puzzle 24. Okay. In puzzle 24, I have um, two that need to be flipped. So first I'm just going to say, well, let me just flip this one guy using the pattern I just did. Uh, F, U, D, L2, U2, D2, R. Okay, so he's flipped and he's over here. And it's then messed up the whole bottom two rows bottom two layers. If I undo it now, he'll get fixed up. I mean, he'll get flipped back. And the bottom layers will get fixed. 
and nothing else on the top would change. So what I'm going to do is make this extra as a, it's like a commutator. That was, that was sequence A. Now I'm going to take the red piece that needs to get flipped. Because if I undo that, that move I just did, the green piece is going to get unflipped. I don't want to unflip the green edge. I like that green-white. But I want to flip the red-white. So by putting the red-white in the spot where the green-white just was, and now when I undo uh, the sequence, R minus U2. I usually like to go the other way around, but that's all right. D2. Oops. L2. U minus D. F minus. And as you can see, wrong way the cube would be done. So I'm going to show you this on a regular cube also, but that's that's the sequence of patterns. It, it is a lot of moves, but it is it is the A, B, A inverse, B inverse commutator pattern. A is that long F, U, D, L2, U2, D2, R sequence. Uh, B is just moving the top face one move to get the other edge into the place where the first edge ends it up, and then it's undoing uh, a inverse and then B inverse. So here it is on a real Rubik's Cube. I got the green and white that wants to flip and the red. If I do F, U, D minus, L2, U2, D2, R. Now that green and white piece is actually flipped. It's also moved over to that right hand spot. Now if I, and it's messed up the entire bottom two layers. If I undo those moves now, R minus D2, U2, L2, U minus D, I'm back to where I was. But if instead I do the moves, L2, U2, D2, R, and now, instead of undoing it right now and flipping that green and white back, instead it's the red and white that wants to. So it goes into the green and white's place. Now I do the sequence backwards, R minus D2, U2, L2, U minus, T, F minus, and uh, both edges have been flipped. So here's the cube that I've done, been doing. Uh, I have the first three stages, and now all that's left is there seem to be about six edges that need to be flipped. So I'm going to go ahead and do the pattern for those two that are on the top face. Okay, now I'm down. I look around for more edges. Uh, I turn my cube different directions. I see that uh, orange, white, and red, white, so I'm going to do the pattern again. F, U, T minus, L2, U2, T2, R. Now I'm going to do a U2 to get that red and white to where the orange and white was, and then undo it. So that's a little different. Okay, and now I'm down to just, um, looks like just, oh, there's still four more edges to go, so these two, the white, the orange and blue and orange and yellow are in the same configuration as uh, the other two. So I go ahead and do that pattern. It's about 20-something moves. And now I look around, and here are the yellow, blue, and yellow, red. F, U, D minus L2, U2, D2, R, U, R minus D2, L2, U2, L2, and I've completed the Rubik's Cube using just those four patterns. Each one you can understand individually. Well, that concludes the 11-part uh, video series of permutation, group theory for permutation puzzles. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, there will be some more videos where I'll, I'll pick some puzzles, uh, like Pyramid Rubik's Cube or the 4x4 four four Rubik's Cube or just other puzzles to show how the ideas apply, but um, the basic ideas are all in these other videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just on a personal note, I spent 
about 38 years doing the Rubik's Cube with just memorized patterns until I made a serious study of this type of math just uh, about a year and a half ago and had this plan to make the app and to make the videos and uh, I really hope you got something out of them. Thank you.